Welcome to Strong and Balanced. My name is Pat Agostino. I'm a physical therapist here with People Fit. If you have never done this type of class before, we always ask you to consult your physician or physical therapist first. And with that, let's begin with a short warm up. We're going to go feet about hips width apart, knees are soft. Pull that head right up off your shoulders. And we're going to do some nice neck circles in one direction. Okay, let's reverse that circle, please. and some arm circles in one direction. And all these exercises can be done in front of a kitchen sink or a, the back of a sturdy chair, something you can grab onto if you need, need it. And let's reverse that, please. Fantastic. And we're going to march in place, little arch in your back, driving your knees up. Fantastic. Feet up here, wider, please. And stick your bottom out, head and chest up, and we're going to rotate side to side. Great. Come on back up. We're going to come back and forth. And as you bring your feet back, we're going to step back at a diagonal. Again, try to bring yourself back up with that front leg. <clears throat> In five, four, three, two, and one. Let's come right on back up. Feet about hips width apart. And from here, we're gonna come back on your heels and up onto the toes. If you need one finger to hold on to something, that's fine. Let's go heels and toes, up and down. Let's keep on going. Excellent. Now let's get into one of your balance positions, please. The easiest is feet together. Then you can try heel to the inside of your big toe. The next challenging position is feet one in front of the other. Or you can try one foot up off the ground. We're going to bring your thumbs up. Knees are soft. And you're just going to look at one thumbnail and then the other. Bob is a shoulder to keep your arm up like this. Find a spot on the wall and you can even look, spot the thumbnail, but you really do want to try to refocus the eyes on each position if possible. In three, two, and one. Let's switch feet, please. Soften up those knees, bring the thumbs up again, and let's look thumb to thumb. If you find a position that's just too easy, and by too easy, I mean 
your feet aren't wiggling at all, your body's not having to make balance corrections, then, may, then maybe move to a slightly more challenging position. If on the other hand, you find yourself having to step quite often, then maybe you make it a little less challenging. Or bend your knees, pull that belly button in and see if you can really hold yourself to the ground. In three, two, and one. Let's bring those hands on down. Um, we're gonna grab a weight if you have one. Uh, if you wanna grab a water bottle or something to give you resistance, that's fine. Otherwise you can do these things without any weight at all. <clears throat> And we're going to start off with holding the weight in front of you. If you need your hands for balance, put the weight down. But otherwise, we're going to take your toes and turn them slightly in. And we're going to come up onto your toes and back on your heels. Toes and heels. Yeah, the lack of snow has been very nice for work and commuting, but I would like to snowshoe or cross country ski, and just that has not been enough. Although Karen and I did go night skiing up in New Hampshire, just a little, uh, four or five hours on Saturday night, uh, which was beautiful. And they did have plenty of snow up there. So in three, two, and one, and thanks for my balance class, I did not fall down once. Okay, let's have hold on to the weight in one hand. Let's stretch forward with the opposite knee bent. Remember, nice straight spine, lean forward at your waist, and we're gonna pull up towards your head. Pulling up and down. Hand slides right by your body and shoulder stays down away from your ear. <clears throat> Good. And five, four, three, two, and one. Let's switch to the other side, please. Same exact thing, lean forward, pull on up and down. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's put the weight into one hand. Let's get into your balanced position. Soften those knees. Elbow inside your body. And let's curl on up and down. <clears throat> and if this is super easy, maybe try lifting that front foot or just narrowing your base of support for three, two, and one. Great. Let's switch feet and switch hands and curl on up and down. Good. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's grab the weight on each side. We're going to bend those knees, pull that belly button in, bring the shoulders back just a little bit, and then you're going to press and return. Press and return. Now let's spot this your shoulders, then only come out maybe a little bit. If you can't pull on your back, you really want to make this a core exercise by really pulling your belly button in. Good, and working on that posture, up nice and tall. Good, for five, four, 
three, two, and one. Great. You're going to hold the weight this way like a hammer now. We're going to get back into your balance position. And I want you to bring that hammer up toward your shoulder. And then you most certainly can push up overhead unless it bothers your shoulder. So we're going to come down, back up, and push up, and down and return. Excellent. Good. Down and return. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, and last one. And let's switch to the other side, please. We're going to do the same exact thing. Either just a curl up and down or a curl and press. Curl and press. Or just a curl for five, four, three, two, and last one, very nice job. Let's take that weight and we're gonna put it on the ground in front of you. You don't necessarily need a weight. You can even look at some spots that maybe you have on your carpet or your floor. You're gonna stand around six to eight inches away from your weight. And let's just work on some shifting side to side. Remember, you're a big oak tree. Big oak tree. So let's shift your weight all onto your right foot by leaning over to that right side. Make sure your right knee is slightly bent. And let's tap your weight and then return your foot to the floor. Tap and return. You're just bouncing on one foot, trying to keep your head over this way. Now you can try tapping one foot, one side of the weight, I'm sorry, the other side, and then back down to the ground making yourself a nice little triangle, okay? Okay. So touch, gently touch and return. Good. Two more. And last one. All right, let's shift over to the other side. Touch and return. And if that is enough, great. But boy, you can touch one side, the other side, and back. See what feels comfortable to you. <clears throat> and let's try, try five more of these. Four. Three, two, and one. Excellent work. All right, let's get that weight right out of the way, please. And let's see if we can just work on stretching out those calves and your hip flexors. Again, back toe slightly in, long step forward with the other foot. If you want to hold on to a wall or the back of a chair, that's fine. Belly button is in. Remember, we don't want any arching of that back. So first start with your pelvis. Now bend your front knee, keeping your rear heel on the ground. So hopefully you feel a stretch in the front of your hip or the back of your calf. <clears throat> and let's just hold that position.
Excellent. And let's switch to the other side, please. Again, nice long step forward, belly button in, shoulders back, and let's bend that front knee. Let's go 10 more seconds, please. Good. Let's come on back up. And we're going to do uh, some grapevine, which is where we're crossing our feet over. So you need about three or four feet of space. And so we're going to start off by taking this outside foot and bringing it right in front of the other and pausing there for a moment. And then you're going to step over with that left foot and then take the right foot behind and pause and over and in front and step and behind and step. All right, so we're going to go back the opposite way. So let's take your left leg over the top, step. Behind and step over the front and step behind and step. If you have more trouble doing the step behind piece, it's because your front knee is not bending enough. So make sure that we keep that front knee bent when you're stepping behind. Okay, let's step over the front and step. Now bend this left knee and step behind. Good. And step. Step over the front. And step. Step behind. And step. Go on back. Step over the front. And step. Step behind. And step. Over the front. And step, and step behind, and step. All right, if we want to add some head turns to this, we most certainly can. So every time you step over the front, we're going to look left, right. Every time you step behind, you're going to look up, down. This is good for the brain. Listen to me, people. Stick with me. All right, so over the top, you're going to look side to side, and step. Step behind, you're going to look up. And down, and step over the front. You got it, side to side. And step, step behind, up, and down, and step. We're gonna do the same thing on the way back. Step over the top, look side to side. And step, step behind, up and down and step. Step over the top, side to side and step. Step behind, up and down and step. All right, let's stretch out your lower back and your hamstrings. And to do that, if you have osteoporosis or lower back issues, I want you to hold on to something. I want you to keep an arch in your back and I want you to lean forward, keeping that arch until you feel the stretch just behind your thigh here. If you are feeling it just behind the calf, I want you to bring your foot towards the floor to see if you can get a stretch that way. If you don't have either of those things, let's bend those knees, soften them up, and let's just forward fold to stretch your back and your hips hamstrings at the same time. Allow yourself to hang on down. And let's take some nice deep breaths. On the exhale, you're letting your body drop. Again, don't work through any pain. If you develop any back pain, I want you to bend your knees and then come back up to a standing position.
She's stretching one leg. I ask you to stretch the other, please. Let's all take four more nice deep breaths. Last breath, breathe in, bend those knees, come back up to a standing position, and I want you to march in place. Great. And once you feel like your head is pretty clear, we're going to get onto the floor or into bed. If you have a little mini resistance band that you would like to use, uh, this is a great time to grab it. We're all going to start on our back. If you have lower back issues, again, we're going to do a gentle pelvic tilt, knees up, feet flat, push your lower back flat into the mat, hold it for five seconds, and then relax. If you don't have those issues and would like to try some cycling on your back, please do. Remember, your lower back is pressed. As soon as your back starts to arch, I want you to bring your feet back down to the ground. If today you would like to try cycling opposite knee to shoulder, excuse me, elbow to knee, you just cycling. But again, what I'm doing is I'm keeping my lower back pressed or I'm just doing my pelvic tilts. But all I'm doing is stretching one knee to opposite. You don't actually have to touch, but you're heading in that direction. Again, no back pain for any of this at all. If you're doing your pelvic tilts for one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And when you're done, let's bring those feet back down to planet Earth. Okay. We're gonna bring your knees and feet together, your arms out to the side. And we're going to do a little bit of a lower trunk rotation, which means that I'm just bringing my, both of my knees from one side to the other. I want my belly button in as I'm coming from side to side. Good. Side to side. Three, or five, four, three, two, and one. I want you to cross your left ankle over your right knee. And with your right hand, you're going to gently pull that knee across your body. So hopefully you feel a stretch kind of here in the hips outside of the hip. I'm going to hold it there another 15 seconds. Excellent. Now let's cross your right ankle over your left knee. Use your left hand to gently pull that knee across your body. Your back stays fairly flat because we want to get the stretch on the outside of your hip. And again, 15 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, if you have a mini resistance band, let's put it on. If you normally start doing your hip exercises and you're laying on your right side, maybe switch to the left and vice versa. 
We're going to start off again with your clamshells, knees and feet together, roll your hips slightly forward, bend your hips and knees slightly, and then open and close your knee, keeping your feet together. And 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's straighten your legs out in line with your body. Roll your hips slightly forward. Extend your top leg back, keeping your knee straight. And let's come up and down. Keep that hip pushed away from your ear. In 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's roll your top leg over the front. Okay, so you're just bringing your knee down to the ground or the bed. Your bottom leg, you're going to now raise up and down. Okay. So I'm raising my bottom leg up and down, working the groin muscles as I'm coming up and down. Good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let's roll over to the other side, please. I'm going to do the opposite side. So again, we're going to start off with your clamshells. Hips and knees are slightly flexed. Open and close that band. Keeping your hip rolled slightly forward for a 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And not straighten up your legs in line with your body. Again, roll your hip forward, but slide that top leg back. Knee is straight, and you're gonna come up and down. And raise it up and down, push that hip away for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, and one. Roll the top leg forward, extend the top leg. Okay, so your top, your bottom leg is straight. Your top leg is just rolled onto the bed in front of you. And let's raise the bottom leg. If you're doing these in bed, it's hard to sometimes get lift off because the bed is soft and your hip is sinking into it. But as long as you're trying to lift that bottom leg up and down, We'll be doing this for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Let's come right onto your back, please. Let's remove that resistance band. And we're going to start off with a frog leg stretch, which is soles of your feet together. Let the knees fall out to the side. You most certainly could use the palms of your hands, push those knees down, holding that position to stretch the inside of those groin muscles. 